All right, so some of you have appeared to have issues using a wireless Bluetooth controller with the Raspberry Pi 5 um, using the Supreme build. Obviously, this isn't maximum carnage that I have in front of me, but it's still based on uh, Supreme 1.4.3. Uh, uh, it took me like four minutes to get this thing hooked up, synced up, just following the basic install tutorials. As you can see, I'm wireless. I'm not plugged in. There is the tip of the cord right there. So you guys should be up and running. Now, there is a script in here uh, directly for your 8-bit dough controllers. So if you're having problems with that, then this option right here would be the best one for you. Trying to get it up and running, and it should take you no longer than five minutes in order to get this set up and running. All right, so real quick, we're going to go into options. If you're using Supreme Ultra, we're going to go in, and again, I'm using 1.4.3. Uh, obviously, this is what Maximum Carnage is built on. Uh, we're going to go to your Bluetooth settings there. Once you're in your Bluetooth settings, uh, there's an option on here for your 8-bit dough controller. You want to make sure that you have that turned on for 8-bit dough mapping and hack. Now, I can't really confirm anything about that controller. This is why when we uh, make images, we work, you know, make bills. We tell you what controllers we're using in the videos and pretty much what has been tested uh, because that's not something we can really verify depending upon whatever type of controller or encoder that you do have. But I do know 8-bit dough has been known to work even in the past. Uh, we also have here, this is the option if you want to pair and connect a Bluetooth controller. Obviously, mine is wireless right now. It is all hooked up. Again, there is the plug right there that I have plugged into my Raspberry Pi 5. And it'll say searching. It's not gonna, it shouldn't find anything, or it might find this one, even though it's not uh, in pairing mode. But I just want to show you guys, this is typically what the setting that you'll have to go to in order to get this to work. So the next thing I want to do is you will see a list of Bluetooth devices connected here in the house. We have my Xbox controller. We got my LG Samsung. I'm sorry, we got my LG and Samsung. And then I'm not even exactly sure what this is. Probably an iPhone or some crap that's laying around the house. All right, so I'm going to hit cancel. And then here, again, you want to show your paired connected devices. Uh, that is an option there for you. Sometimes that'll pop up. And then you can also set up a new UDEV rule for uh, some of these controllers. Now, the other option that you will have in here is the ability to connect all of your devices when you turn this on. So that way you don't have to automatically or do this every single time. Uh, you shouldn't have to do it every single time, but I know that uh, the Supreme Team added a, a bunch of new scripts in here in order for you to make that happen. So let's go ahead and take a look at this configure Bluetooth connect mode. Once you're in here, we go to Bluetooth stack default behavior recommended. Let's go back down here. Yeah, let's go back in. All right, so the mode that it should be on and one I recommend is connect to devices once at boot. So uh, that way all of your stuff should be connected at boot. So that's pretty much how you'll set up your Bluetooth controller if you're using Supreme Ultra uh, or some of the other Raspberry Pi images that may be out there. At least I know it works for Supreme Ultra or whatnot. And then there's a special setup here for 8-bit dough. So again, please make sure that you verify your controller requirements and stuff. Nobody can verify what you go out and purchase. Uh, a million encoders out there, million different controllers. Nobody's really going to know exactly what's going on. It's always wise. Uh, to test and know what you guys are getting yourselves into. And and, and kind of going back to that whole, you know, Xbox scenario with uh, the Brook Adaptive Controller and then also the Chrono Zen and PlayStation, these companies don't vouch for unless you have a license with a lot of these controllers. There's so many different controllers, so many different encoders. Nobody can really uh, keep up. It's really up to uh, the manufacturer to really kind of let you know what's going to be uh, parable with a lot of these different devices because there's a company releases a console or a unit they can verify it works for unit but then that company that makes controllers releases something rinky dink that's out there an encoder it may not even work you have no idea what it is in fact i have a ton of controllers uh, myself that look like an xbox style controller but uh they're not an xbox controller in fact you guys will typically see that when you hook up your controllers to your Raspberry Pi using emulation station, it'll look like an Xbox controller or something, but then it'll give you this weird name. Like it'll say maybe Logitech or uh, some other erroneous name, but you're like, well, I thought this was an Xbox controller. 
that's because the encoder inside is something different. But again, you know, and I know, and I know Logitech is legit. I'm just using that as an example. But you will have controllers out there that will look like Xbox, PlayStation, whatever. But you have no idea what type of encoder uh, that they've used in those. So just a heads up to just make sure you play it safe. Make sure you get some quality stuff uh, that you know that it work. I know 8-Bit Doe has been known to work with Raspberry Pi and a lot of other uh, images and stuff but again it's a very risky market when dealing with different encoders and uh, controllers in fact even on the raspberry pi 4 if you guys remember uh, a lot of those encoders that people were getting from china uh, they didn't work with raspberry pi they'll say it works for raspberry pi or say it'll work for retro pi but none of these people test any of this stuff they're just trying to get your money and sell you some stuff and then hopefully that it works because they're just basing it off of something that happened uh, previously but I know that there's been workarounds for things like that. But again, when you guys are getting this summer equipment, we can only test what we have, what we have in front of us, vouch for what we have, what we've tested it on. But there's going to be so many different companies popping up, releasing different hardware that nobody can really vouch for it until you buy it and until you test it yourself. So with that being said, you guys have a good night. I hope this video was helpful for you. Almost forgot, one more crucial step before you guys do any of that. Uh, obviously, if you're using Supreme Ultra by default, uh, by default, I know that the Xbox controllers will work automatically. So let's go into RetroPie, and then you wanna go into RetroPie Setup, and you wanna click on the option to Manage Packages, and then you wanna click on Manage Driver Packages. So uh, if you're using a PlayStation controller, or maybe something else, it by default is not it may not work i mean my i mean who obviously really knows but it may not work for the most part you see these drivers in here these are all the drivers that you need uh for your controller now uh, i know in the past on the pi 3 and even on the pi 4 there were driver configurations so if you're trying to use a playstation type controller uh with xbox sometimes these drivers may block out one another and cause some in incompatibility issues. I haven't tried a PlayStation controller and Xbox at the same time. However, if you have a PlayStation controller, you will need to install the PS3 controller driver here. And then if you're, or maybe the custom HID uh, Sony, that also may be good for fight sticks. So for those of you having problems, uh, besides the initial step that I already showed you, you will need to go through here, download uh, one of the drivers, uh, additionally, we also have one here for your Steam controller. Uh, we have the X Arcade 2 joystick, the Xbox driver. All of these you really don't need to touch with. Uh, the X patch automatically work if you're using the Xbox controller. I'm not exactly sure which one of these drivers you need for an 8 bit Doe controller. Never had one of those. Don't plan on getting one of those. But uh, you guys will have to tinker around. It may be six axis. I know PS3 controller and six axis, those used to be. Uh, or at least the six axes used to be the compatible ones for like the PS2 types, PS3, PS4s, whatnot. But at any rate, these are the additional drivers that you would need to install on here before trying to set up your more obscure controller if this Xbox adapter one does not work in addition to the steps that I already showed you. So you guys have a good night, enjoyed it, but that is uh, pretty much the final step there. And then once you do that, you may have to exit out. Uh, you could do a reboot, just exit out, and you should be able to set up your controllers and you should be fine.